So this side, where I'm coming from, is the top of the farm. We have all the action on the farm literally happening this side. All the poultry houses, the goat houses, where the cattle sheds used to be. Everything is this side, you know? And then this, where I'm going, is the bottom of the farm. And this is a bit isolated. And if you've been following the channel for quite some time, you do know that we do have a pond on the farm, or two ponds on the farm. They've literally become ponds, but before they were not ponds. They had been dug as dams to preserve water in order to feed cattle during the dry season, or during any season really. It's very common in Uganda over here that we dig dams in order to preserve water uh, for the drier seasons. So two very, very big dams were dug, but then over time, I believe due to flooding, you see we have a, a stream at the very bottom of the farm. It, it's quite a huge farm that we do have here. It's in length, it's probably about two kilometers across in length yeah so it's it's quite a big farm that we do have over here so over time the bottom section of the farm occasionally floods i found out that the floods we had over the last one year are actually not usual floods yeah most of the time it doesn't really flood but once in a while it does flood and once it floods that terribly the water all the way from the stream covers the entire bottom section of the farm and it comes and reaches all the way to the dam area right up to where i'm standing right now and it so happens that the river just like any river well it's a stream has fish inside it different varieties of fish you know there is tilapia there is a uh, catfish and what that means is that these dams over here you can see one right here finally got colonized by fish so we do have fish inside these dams and so i believe that turns these dams into ponds we didn't put the fish in here intentionally they just became ponds by accident by natural means so we have different species of fish living inside these ponds we have a very big one over here then i'll have to walk along the sides you can see the sides we have quite some vegetation surrounding the ponds because they got abandoned some of the vegetation is quite thorny if we move to this you see two years ago the entire farm was just full of thorny vegetation like this a lot of thorny vegetation we have a small connecting dam over here that really never gets full apart from when it's really really rained yeah if i zoomed in you can see that there is water inside there now it's covered by grass uh, because nothing comes inside here so slowly by slowly it's getting covered by grass but from a distance you can see that it's actually a dam you see the top over there and then it will move downwards and upwards and then finally we have a bigger dam over here this is even bigger than the first one that you saw you see you can see it over here a beautiful big dam um that's really not utilized for anything besides the fish that are living inside there and enjoying those, their lives. Now at the top of the farm, in one of the bit isolated areas, we had been keeping some free range animals. We were keeping some chickens over there. These chickens were crossed with local females, but the males were really exotic birds. The layer parent stock and the broiler parent stock, these are breeders that are used to breed birds for awesome meat and eggs, you know, high egg production. We got out all the local males, that's the cocks, and replaced them with the exotic breeds. And we've been crossing them, and they've given us some really good breeds. In addition to that, we have some geese, we have some guinea fowls, and um, they were living in a really isolated area, fenced off. You see, by the time we started working on the farm, the farm had uh, the birds living in bushes. They would literally come and climb trees and shrubs like this and this is why they enjoyed sleeping but then it didn't make sense because it was not safe for them wild animals would pick them up and kill them we had some turkeys over here which we got rid of but one of the turkeys i remember was vividly eaten by a wild animal we just found a trek of feathers moving all the way to the bottom of the farm actually it, the turkey was dragged all the way to the very bottom of the farm we have quite some wild animals here you know um i've seen a few of the Herbivores, you know, like antelopes, then the wild pigs. I think I know. I think they're wild pigs, not wild hogs. Uh, but then 
I haven't really seen the carnivores besides a few things like snakes. Are snakes carnivores? I think they are omnivorous, yeah? They eat both meat and vegetation. I think they are mainly carnivorous anyway. I've seen a few snakes, some really big ones. I've seen cobras, I've seen pythons on the farm. Then the smaller animals that are like cats with long tails. I don't know what they are called. Those are very good at eating um, chickens, yeah? So we had to isolate them, put them in places where they can live a bit safe. But then... Uh, we've decided to push them even further away uh, from that area because we, w we just want them to be living in as natural an environment as possible. So some time back, we decided to fence the area around this pond. And if I move around, you'll be able to see it, yeah? We decided to fence the area. By the way, over there, you can see that we have some bird nests. Let me zoom in. You see the bird nests coming off this tree? can even see some up over there yeah so these are bird nests and we've decided not to disorganize them yeah the birds love it over here it's mainly during the dry season that you'll see loads and loads of birds right now it's been raining so there are not too many but you still do see some nests over here so you can see that we built a fence it's a big one it runs all the way around this area this area is maybe three acres you know two three acres where the pond is yeah, I keep calling them ponds, but really they've become ponds. They're no longer dams anymore. And so we surrounded them with the entire fence that you can see. It's a good chain link fence. You can see the the gauge, yeah? It's not the thickest of all, but it's not the thinnest, yeah? It's really good. Um, it's a good gauge. And then you can see that we have chicken wire also, yeah? So there are really a lot of levels of security that we do have over here i'll explain them to you number one is this fence itself so this fence ensures that the bigger animals don't come through uh any of the bigger animals they can't come through if you have a snake the snake might actually have go through but if you have a you know the bigger animals they really can't come through uh, monkeys will certainly jump over that's not an issue but monkeys might not be a, a problem for geese for example and then over here you can see the smaller mesh so the smaller mesh it's to prevent the smaller animals from going in and out out also because the guinea fowls this you know the baby chicks they might be able to get out but with this mesh over here this chicken wire they won't be able to get out and then they'll be protected so a python might be able to go through the bigger one but it certainly won't go through the smaller one and if in some way it manages to go through it might be a problem for you to get out so if we find it it's easy for us to capture it and you know go and find somewhere else to throw it uh, somewhere far away from our area now the second thing that we've done is to build a house so there's a house that we've been building yeah um the work is still going on in, in maximum a few days time we should be done with this as you can see we have some mesh over here so we've put mesh this is a basic house very very basic yeah maybe the first one that's almost completed can be used to demonstrate that let's move closer you can see the house the house is made from mesh you can see the mesh over here there is iron sheet at the bottom it's probably maybe two feet from the bottom and they're going to put another iron sheet at the top over, over here it's probably maybe two feet yeah that we're going to put here and then it's an iron sheet roof now this is a basic poultry house very basic cheap you don't need to do too much and this is stuff that i advocate for continuously because when you're starting out on your farm money is not a luxury you don't have too much money there's a lot of things you need to spend on you need to buy feeders you need to buy drinkers you need to buy the birds themselves you need to buy a lot of equipment you need to buy feeds so spending a lot of money on a fancy house doesn't make too much sense as long as it works the most important thing is that it works when it works in the future you can invest more money and try to make it better try to you know upgrade it but at the beginning it's not necessary it's not really really necessary that you spend too much money on a poultry house you know go basic go as basic as possible with time you can build it out you know make it better so that's something that i continuously advocate for when you're building a chicken house so yes in a very short while our houses over here are going to be done with they're going to be done with and then 
we're going to bring the birds in here and oh my god they're going to be loving it they're going to be loving it like i said this place was really bushy before very bushy but as you can see we've done our best to ensure that we slash it we've cut all the thick and big vegetation it's well maintained the grass is down to a level that's acceptable actually the grass is perfect right now if we bring the geese in here they'll be foraging you know the rest of the birds they'll be foraging uh, the other thing that we're going to have to do is for the staff who is going to be working in here we just need to put up a very small tiny house for him you know inside here because we don't want him to be very far away in a very small tiny house for him to actually reside inside here so he takes a bit more control of what's happening and then you know when he's residing in here he feels a bit of more responsibility responsibility for maintaining the environment making sure that the grass is cut short making sure that bushes don't grow and everything is everything is a bit more controlled and then if you take a look at the pond over here the geese are going to love it you see we have about maybe seven geese yeah maybe seven geese we started out with just three and recently they have reproduced unfortunately a lot of their eggs don't hatch we want to make sure that they hatch in as natural environment as possible so we avoid we avoid putting in more artificial stuff but over here you can see that they are going to enjoy it because geese love water and inside the water they're going to be living a time of their lives they're going to be living a time of their lives and it will be impossible to catch them but then on water geese multiply more um so they will reproduce more we shall have higher numbers i don't know why they lay their eggs and where they incubate them from really don't care as long as they reproduce and become more that will be an awesome thing and then occasionally we replace them with uh with with more ganders we replace the current gander with another gander to ensure that you know there's some cross breeding and we're not maintaining the same line of uh, of geese actually i think it's about time that i do that yeah i need to make sure that i get out the the gander that we have because it has bred with those ones and it might breed with it might breed with its children which is not a good idea yeah so it might be about time that i introduce a new gander so guys yeah that's um that's all about the pond that we have on the farm uh, it's interesting it's beautiful yeah it's nice seeing all this ecosystem going around on the farm new things coming up changing things here and there you see a farm is not like I don't know a farm is a bit complicated because it's in the natural environment a lot of times there are things you plan and they never go to pass I mean the things you never plan and they just happen and land on you and you're like oh let's do this so that's what's going to be happening with the farm yeah a lot of these things we actually didn't plan or you plan that you're going to be doing the things within a week you find yourself you don't have the time you can only do them maybe three months later or four months later so living on a farm is beautiful it's enjoyable and it gives us all some challenges if this is your very first time on the channel come on here at farm up i share with you everything that happens in farm life, yeah, right here at the farm, we have quite a number of animals, uh, over 70,000 poultry, maybe even more than that, um, lots of chickens, we have geese, guinea fowls, we have goats and sheep, and a few calves left over here. Before we had a quite a number of cattle, we got rid of all of them. Um, so just a few left, yeah, just a few left. And uh, lots of crops growing over here fish with bees so i always continuously share this on the channel so don't forget to hit that subscribe button smash the notification bell that you'll never miss out on an upload lots of love bye